Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is September 20th, 2015. I'll try to keep this video short and sweet without going on too long. Uh, this is a great time to be in nature, being that it is 2015. And for the last several years, we've been in a solar maximum period. And for those of you that pay close attention to what's happening on the international stage, as well as the nation, as well as local government, there's a lot of things happening on the planet right now, a lot of tensions, a lot of protests, a lot of wars and rumors of wars. And even though it seems like we're going in a certain trajectory somewhere towards a massive earthquake, a massive die-off event, a massive world war, uh, what I have noticed is a lot of these events tend to happen in cycles, kind of like sound waves. For any of you that have ever edited sound or uh, on a computer and you're able to see the oscillating wave, for those of you that understand this concept of what I'm I'm sure many of you do. The sun acts in a very similar way, to where it has its ups and its lows, to where it's more active and less active. And there are people in our society, throughout our world, that for a significant period of time, uh, mankind has been looking at how we are affected by the solar cycles. So this is one of my favorite topics. One of the reasons I enjoy coming out in nature during solar maximum, knowing how we're affected by solar flares, how I've seen more fights, more drive-by shootings, more social ills, more drug addiction, but also there's positive things that can also happen when the sun's really active, like people going off grid, like people moving and, and trying new things, uh, new jobs, new experiences, new websites. I find that I do the most writing. I find that at times I, I do the most videos. And there's been certain projects that I've completed in the past because within the, the last 10 years that I've been doing independent freelance citizen journalism. Uh, this is also, uh, I, I editorialize. This is, this is my op-ed platform, this YouTube channel, where I express outside-the-box ideas, outside the box of that which is conventional. So when I look at the sun, I don't just look at the potential that our grid could go down, massive transformers fried from a massive solar flare, that's very possible, but some people just, they only look at that. They only look at that. And I feel like there's something about our ego that doesn't want to even believe, nor understand, nor investigate how we're affected by things happening up above. Now, I happen to believe, I happen to feel that we are really impacted by the sun in a way that it's almost more important for us to understand how that works than to obsess on certain planetary alignments. Now I have nothing but the respect for people that question their reality. I am just observing and have observed most of my life that some people obsess on these planets, Mercury retrograde, all this other stuff. It, it's significant to a point, you know, because you look at the zodiac, you have 12 different sun signs. And you also have the, the Chinese calendar as well, based on the belief that there's a different type of an output each year from the sun having an influence over personality, hence the sun signs, astrology. But I'm not as into that as how most of us are affected in a pretty similar manner, whether you're male or female. We know that the moon tides strongly affect the biology and psychology and at times personality of a woman, but men, man today, but man and women, men and women both are both affected by these uh, solar flares. It's not inherently positive or negative. Energy is energy. Okay, there's not blaming the sun and there's not worshiping the sun in this discussion, but understanding that the sun affects a lot of things and acts as a booster. It's a booster. It's like you're driving down the, you know, the highway and you hit your, you know, like out of a movie, your nitrous booster and all of a sudden shh, you're going forward like the human body and what you're doing. If you're overly emotional, you can burn out during these periods, being overly reactive to certain things. I'm an emotional person. Sometimes my emotions get me in trouble and people go, you really should be a little bit more focused and not, not be reactive so much emotionally. 
And the reality is, is that emotions aren't bad. Emotions are what make us human. It's a part of the human experience to have emotions. But the idea is to not be controlled by our emotions. You know, when someone threatens you or says, hey, we don't like you or, or whatever, people can be hurtful in their own way and demeaning. And because we have emotions as humans, sometimes we can react to that and the whole situation can get worse. Misunderstandings can develop and then you have just a whole bunch of emotional people. What I can say is that looking at the recent events, let's just start with the amount of people going down to the county commissioner meeting last week. It didn't surprise me that during this particular period, that around the period of the largest geomagnetic storm of this year, which means when the solar flares hit the Earth's magnetic field, there's a geomagnetic storming that occurs. And that geomagnetic storming that occurs in the upper atmosphere is what directly impacts us as human beings. So you look at the newspaper, you see stories of violence, you see stories of protests, you see stories of uh, new ideas and breakthroughs in science. That's also a trend that you can see with the solar flares, breakthroughs in science, new ideas. So without getting too long-winded, I'm going to leave a link down below to my one-hour presentation that I gave in Pennsylvania several years ago. And I was actually using solar power, using this very computer right here, which is one of several computers that I now own. This Mac I had throughout the winter when I lived here in the San Luis Valley, I didn't even have an RV then. And I only had a 22, try not to laugh. Try not to laugh. Um, I only had a 22-watt solar panel at that time, and I made it work. And I went to a friend's house uh, when I didn't have enough power, visited his uh, mobile home, uh, and that was a good friend of mine to be able to bounce ideas off of in the desert when I was working on the PowerPoint presentation. There are certain terms that you may not have heard before that kind of describe this process of how human biology is affected by the sun. Chronobiology is one. But there is no true science adopted in today's day and age that's taught in the schools, that's discussed on television, dealing with how there are patterns and cycles of war and peace, charts that Alexander Chavinsky and Russia put together in 1917 using Chinese sunspot counts going back 2,500 years, cycles of war and peace, war and peace. We see 9-11, massive solar flares. Now I'm going to omit from this video some of my opinions and views on how certain events are staged by the powers that be because they know how men can be duped into war, being aggressive, you know, their bodies flooded with testosterone. Literally, we know about the female cycle to a point with the moon cycle. Men have a cycle as well on this 11-year count. Between, on average, 8 to 11 years, there's a peak. You'll see the most wars. You'll see the most misunderstandings in local societies during the minimum portion. Things are at their calmest. Okay. Things are calmer. It doesn't mean there isn't war taking place. There's always some form of conflict and confusion. Classism, racism, um, other things taking place. A lot of Americans are living the American refugee experience right now, going from place to place to place because their family wealth has been destroyed by this country in the last few years. I want to stay on topic here, but the off-the-grid movement, movement that's taking place is in line with human beings seeking to be more in line with nature. There's a lot of really toxic people in cities today. And there are people going out in America. They're trying to create better places to live for themselves and their families. And the vast majority of these people want to live within a sense of harmony with other people, regardless of the perceived differences based on where we were born and many other factors. The solar flare element over human mass migration, I saw it in Portland. I may have come across as a little angry at outsiders when I was there. It was only because of what I saw them do to our community there. So in one way, I do understand the concerns of the people in Costilla County that are seeing outsiders coming in. I understand where that concern comes from. I know that concern quite well. With Portland, it was a case of people with a lot of money coming in, changing things, and raising. It wasn't poor people. 
It was people with money. Now, I want to say, let's keep this on the solar flares. There are periods where I've seen massive amounts of people move into Portland by the thousands. And I've seen periods where people are just taken off. And what I want to say to people, I don't want to get too complicated in this video. I want you to check out my presentation down below in the link if you're interested in the subject. But it's such a big subject, some people don't even know where to begin to address it. And again, I try to get through that belief system that some people have that we're not affected by the sun. I want to focus more on the sun than the stars, but we are affected by other things as well. When certain planets go into position, the sun is a magnifier. Knowing that, and knowing that there's patterns of civil unrest, not only that, but earthquakes. And the reason this is happening is because it's almost as if the veil is thinner. And with the sun, you're dealing with electromagnetic energy. You're dealing with spirit, and it's boosting us up. And so I think that things rise to the surface. Certain emotions that people may have had rise to the surface, and it comes out in their behavior. And it can come out really strong, and there could be fighting. There can be yelling. There could be people getting emotional. There could be people saying things. There could be misunderstandings. And I see this time and time again in society. Uh, I see road rage. I see people flipping each other off uh, in the, uh, uh, on the freeway. And so when that energy is coming in, you know, it's very important. I, I'm not going to force any spiritual or religious belief system down anyone's throat, but there is such a thing as meditation and or martial arts, dancing, uh, other forms of exercise. It's good for the body to release energy because the energy is power and light. Okay, So it's good for the body to be in line with nature. Back to the mass migration cycles. I, I believe we're seeing it now in different areas. We're seeing people go from one place to another. And we're going to keep coming back down to this topic, but sometimes people can get really scared and afraid when they see people moving to a certain area or when people move away. It's like people moving one area. People, it's like there's something going on with the sun that gets us as human beings tapped into our what we are as humans that naturally is nomadic. We have magnetite in the human brain. And these microscopic magnetic crystals, which were discovered first in the human brain in 1992, they're previously discovered in birds and pigeons, which helps them navigate the Earth's magnetic field. Most of you already know about this. This is just review. We as human beings have that same hardware in us. And so for those of us that are trying to get closer to the Earth and nature and the elements, when we go through these solar flare cycles, these epochs, we see certain actions and things taking place in society, and we also see people moving from one place to another. Please excuse the noise here from the, uh, from the inverter that I have to flip on. And so by understanding the cycles, when you see wild behavior in others, when you feel really intense emotions within yourself, just remember to take a deep breath. It's a cycle. You've heard this expression, this too will pass. One of the things that I look forward to in the next couple of years is quieter times in our society. I still believe they're heading towards some sort of major economic event in which living off the grid is a much better place to be, especially if you're growing your own food and you're not required on welfare handouts. People need to prepare to move beyond the government handout system if they're already on it. In the San Luis Valley, there are certain things you can grow if you have access to water. Some of those things we haven't figured out yet. Some things are very expensive, and there's talks of people pulling their money together so they can do it legally and have a well. But there are other places in America where you may be where you have easier access to water. The point is growing one's own food, building one's own home, developing skills that perhaps one did not have before, skills in framing, skills in building. And there's many different types of building. Some people may look at someone digging into the ground and they may think that person's harming the ground without realizing they're building an earth bag home. During these times that we're in, with, with the march towards a great war, as it's being called now, 
between the country that most of us are in now, the United States, and the rising powers of the East, China and Russia. These wars that come and invasions come in cycles. And from what I've seen with these war cycles, as well as the black and white information that we can prove, dealing with where China's military will be in several years, well, Russia's, where they are at now, but we're seeing these stepping points to where I don't think they're going to war or feel anytime soon. Instead, I think that we are going to see a consistent cycle of the sun matched with cycles of war and peace. So in the years after the 2020s, this is a time period where a lot of militaries around the world are going to be ready for war. And the U.S. economy is not expected to be in a better situation. The deficit, the national debt, the amount of people on food stamps in this nation, the amount of wealth that's been lost by, by many elders losing their money to the medical industrial complex, nothing to pass on to their later children. See, in today's day and age in the real America, real wealth isn't passed down anymore. It's like being lost in the system as people try to survive what's going on around them, what's going on with real estate. Many elders throughout America of different racial backgrounds losing their farms and their livelihood. So there's a big movement to go off the grid now and step back from dependency on government services, government, the power system, the power grid. If something happens to the power grid, and I wrote an article about that too that was published in an international magazine. I wrote it on my 29th birthday. I'm going to leave that down below as well. See, these are the things that I care about. And there are many reasons why I'm in Costilla County. And I will continue to work with others off the grid so we can help each other weather the storm. That's not just coming, it's already arrived. It's already arrived. You know, I'm a fighter and I enjoy fighting corruption and oppression. But I also know that there's a lot of misunderstandings right out of the gate, especially if people don't know you from Adam. So right now, this morning, in this video, what I want to bring the attention to, especially for those of you that have been watching my, my videos for years and you've seen my other talks on solar flares, let me bring this back down to where we are. You've heard all the concerns about September and this economic meltdown. You've heard talks about CERN wanting to open up portals or doing weird things with their technology. Stuff that's really creeping people out. Not to mention their Shiva, the destroyer. Symbolism in the statue outside their CERN headquarters. Real creepy stuff. Not only that, you have Jade Helm. Okay. In no way did I perceive that Jade Helm was some sort of way to start this this fall, doing roundups. There's a lot of disinformation on the internet where people are crying wolf. And that is unfortunate, and I think that is also deliberate, the act of certain intelligence agencies that deliberately put out disinformation on the Internet to cause fear and panic. But I have noticed <coughs> that people get really concerned, more concerned, about their own mortality. So I see cycles where more people are going off-grid or prepping because of the way that our bodies are responding to it. So I mentioned the magnetite already, but the, there are other things going on on a hormonal level, I talked about the rise in testosterone, and Burl Payne calls it war psychosis. And so there's a, there's a mindful way and an unmindful way of dealing with this energy, and there's also a time to defend yourself with force, which is not violence. When you're defending yourself against assault, that is not violence. And so there are periods where people are fighting back. And not all fighting is, is warlike. Some people are pushing back with their energy because they have more energy, they have more focus. So they're writing more articles. They're, they're playing in the world of ideas. They're creating things. They're building things. Building homes is a part of that. Also with the solar cycles, take a look at potato yields, uh, other forms of agricultural yields. There was a book written about in the 50s 
I believe, by Edward Dewey. And back then in the 50s, he took the work of, of Burl Payne, uh, rather, of Alexander Chavinsky of Russia of 1917. By the way, the oligarchs in Russia, during the time of the Russian Revolution, had this guy thrown in jail, in prison, for coming up with a different thesis or theory as to why the Russian Revolution took place. So here we are in 2015, we're at the tail end of this solar cycle, okay. Uh, we started to see a rise in solar activity around 2011, right around the time that Occupy, and I'm not an Occupy member, although there may, there may be some crossover in, in beliefs with some people that have gone to some of those demonstrations. Uh, I've always seen Occupy as a, a controlled opposition group. So those are also times where revolutions are controlled, directed, because there's an organic rise in the population going, we can't take this anymore, hell no, we won't go, it's rising like, like a flower, and it's sprouting, and then those interested in controlling the media and controlling the people and directing revolutions, they seize upon that flowering, and they redirect it, slam it straight into a wall until it just, like a cartoon, just smears all the way down. And so there's lots of movements where the people have come together that only last for a few years because the people are feeling the energy and sometimes the media will come and try to redirect it or let's just say with all due respect to atheists watching um, less than friendly influences those known and those unknown Woo! but uh, we're not alone in this universe so there are periods where I think there are things out there that are absolutely toying with humanity. Like this is some sort of a video game. Like this dimension is some sort of uh, a dimension where certain things happen that most human beings are just not aware of. Ultimately, we're in a matrix of sorts where we're living under an empire. Where we have a few at the top controlling the whole game. And I am looking at the post-2020s at a period where I think they're going to pull this trigger and turn America against China, China against America, China and Russia against America. And right now, if you look closely at what's, what's really happening in the Middle East, during this war cycle, Russia's getting their exercise in Syria. Okay. United States, oh, greatest military in the world. They can't take out ISIS. Oh, now Russia's in Syria. Now there's you know, greater ties between Iran and Russia, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Iran Nuke Deal. You got everything building over here in the South China Sea, for those that don't know, uh, the tensions over China building these artificial islands, and you have all these insane weapons that all the countries are developing and sharing. I believe the greatest threat that affects us all is this coming stage world war scenario. World War Three or World War Four coming after the 2020s. This is the type of thing that can bring a lot of us together, you know, to, to weather the coming storm. I've lived most of my life trying to actually warn people about the, this event and being laughed at, so no laughter from new viewers in the local community is going to damage this armor. It's very serious what everyone in this nation faces. And the last couple of years, it's been revealed to most of you that these are not conspiracy theories or wild ideas or fake prophecies. Uh, the powers that be on this planet are preparing to go to war. I happen to be coming to you now from what I absolutely believe will be one of the safest places in all of the planet Earth at some point in the next few years. And it's for that reason that I came to Costilla County to live a long life because I don't see some people getting through the things that are coming in about a decade. It's, it's not, those aren't easy shoes to walk in where you feel like you can see the invasion coming over the hill. And there were times in Native American tribes where the shaman or, or, or a member of the group would have a dream or a vision and try to warn the others that white man was coming. Or other Europeans were coming to change their way of life. I feel like history is repeating itself. And with these solar epochs, sometimes history does repeat itself. And we're reminded of how far we have yet to go to evolve beyond the beasts that some people have become on this earth and become something more. We are something more than this material world. We are spirit. We are light. We are energy. We are soul. And the sun is energy. The sun is light. The sun is soul. 
And so during these periods where we're having strong geomagnetic storms, things happen. Sometimes people rise against oppression. Sometimes those involved in oppression turn it up even more. Sometimes it's the time where people go from one side to the other. That's why sometimes you see breakups in relationships, new relationships starting. That's why you see some people moving away from one city to another. Something's being shook up. The energy field around their human body is being affected by the Earth's energy field. And there's so much more that I have to talk about uh, in relation to the subject. Now that we are uh, 25 minutes in, I'll go ahead and stop now. And there's a couple other things taking place in the world and a couple other points I want to make uh, about society at large. And I'm going to be doing those things later on throughout the day and later on throughout the week. <coughs> I'm Alex Hansry. website is alexhansry.tv where there's an automatic feed that will show you all the recent um, videos that I've done. The dailymatrix.com is a special new site where I'm going to be posting news relevant to the San Luis Valley. I also have another website called worldwarzero.com and that's the website where there's going to be a, a variety of information about China, Russia, and the United States. And at some point, perhaps this winter, I'm going to be putting up another website that's just going to have information about the solar flares, about how we're affected by the solar flares, human society, human consciousness, the weather, earthquakes, cycles of war and peace, and also periods where people believe that there is more phenomena taking place, where the veil is thinner, where our world is boosted with this electromagnetic energy that has various effects on different people. I do believe that we all have the hardware that can allow us to be somewhat intuitive or to have a perception, and we're talking about non-local awareness. And I think during these periods, we have more of that available energy to work with. Check out the links down below. One of them is a one-hour presentation that I gave in Pennsylvania. I have about a hundred page of notes that go with that particular presentation. If you have any particular question, put it down in the comment section from that video, and I'll see if I can find you the link. The second link is an eight to nine page article that was published in Nexus Magazine, where I am discussing uh, back then what was already being scientifically proven that a number of things are taking place. We're going into an unpredictable solar cycle, and I would say solar cycles, including number 25, which will be the one starting in the 2020s as we conclude this one now. But it's happening at a time where our Earth's magnetic field is getting thinner, and that means more solar rains coming through, more uh, solar radiations coming through. This has effects on consciousness, and there are many books that have talked about the science of genetic mutation during solar flares, or the idea that we go through changes on a physical level in these epochs. So check out the first link, that's the video, and check out the second link, that's the 2009 article written four years prior to that presentation, six years ago from today, on my 29th birthday, and, and just think about what this means for our planet. More solar flares, a thinning Earth's magnetic field. We have magnetic fields. And we have hardware in our brain and in our body that's being affected by the poles. Just like there's tides affecting the water, we're like that water being affected by the solar tide. I want to thank you for watching, and we'll be back with more.